OKBC calculus. So we're going to start our next lesson, which a combination of 9.4, 10.4 um, is going to encompass a little bit of exponential growth, Newton's law of cooling, um, and finally the logistic differential equation. Um, so I want to tell you <clears throat> that now that I'm pre-making videos, because we can't go live, um, if you have any questions whatsoever, you know, I, if, if you send them to me during the school day, not after school, but during the school day, I'll be more than happy to answer them. So if you guys um, have questions on the last homework, please let me know via ESB so that I can clear up anything or help you with anything you need help with. Okay, so let's start out with exponential decay. <clears throat> this is something you probably remember from Algebra 2 and pre-calculus, I hope. But um, this you wouldn't because this is a differential equation, all right? And this is the, the uh, equation that models exponential growth, right? So dy dt is equal to k times y. And um, k is called the growth constant. And when it's positive, that means whatever it is, the population or bacteria um, is growing. If it's less than zero or negative, that means we're talking about decay. So maybe radioactive decay. Um, so anyway, here's the growth curve, of course, and the decay curve, okay? And you know how to solve this differential equation, right? You separate the variables, you integrate both sides. Um, in this case here, you know, uh, if you forget about the E's, right, we'd get ln absolute value y is equal to kt plus c, and then we'd have to exponentiate both sides because we've got to get rid of that natural log. And um, anyway, we get a solution equation, which is a e to the kt, okay? A um, couple things, <clears throat> little side note here, uh, FYI, um, proportionality, you know, I cannot pronounce that word for the life of me. I never could. But anyway, the rate of increase, which is y prime, right? Uh, for the population at a time t is proportional to the number of individuals um, or elements of the population, okay? It could be animals on a reserve. It could be uh, people, et cetera. The problem with this is that <clears throat> animals or people or bacteria, they don't grow without bound, okay? Eventually, they start to taper off at some point. Um, if people grew exponentially, there would not be enough resources on the planet to sustain us. <laughs> so um, that's where our logistic function is going to come in. But um, anyway, this is the solution to the differential equation that represents exponential growth, right? The rate of growth or decay of some quantity is proportional to the amount at the present time. So the initial condition, okay? So if I start off with a population of, say, 500, uh, bears in the wilds of Alaska. Um, my initial condition would be at t equals to zero. There's 500 bears. So that would be the amount at the present time. We use these for population growth savings, um, where we do um, continuous compound interest um, or decay of radioactive substances. Another one that you might use is Newton's law of cooling. A Newton's law of cooling states that the rate at which an object cools is proportional to the difference um, in temperature between the object and the surrounding medium. So if we take a hot cup of coffee and we just pour it, it's fresh out of the hot Keurig, um, and we put it in our cup and set it on the table, then it's going to start to cool down. And maybe the surrounding environment is 80 degrees or 70 degrees or 60 degrees, depending on what you have your AC on, all right? Um, the coffee is going to, the um, coffee is going to cool uh, proportional to the difference between the temperature and the environment or the room temperature that surrounds it, okay? This Y prime of T, that's the object's temperature at time T. Uh, and generally, room temperature is 70 degrees, so you'll often see, this is the differential equation that represents this. You'll often see a 70 in here, but this could change depending on the situation. So, you know, if you're given a scenario, uh, then you can just put in 
you know, whatever your environment is. So here's a little example. Hot coffee in a 70 degree room cools at a rate proportional to the difference between the coffee temperature and the room temperature. Let y of t be the coffee temperature at time t. Okay, and this is the differential equation that models this rate. If at any given time the coffee temperature is 190 degrees and its temperature is dropping at a rate of 12 degrees per minute, how much later did the coffee temperature reach 130 degrees Fahrenheit? So this is an initial condition type of problem. You want to use your differential equations, your separation of variables. So what we know is that time equals to zero. That's our start time. The rate at which the coffee was cooling was 12 uh, degrees per minute. So we denote that by a negative 12, right? dy dt is negative 12. And at the moment the coffee was poured into the cup, it was 190 degrees. So it's sort of like two initial conditions here. One involving the derivative and one not. So what we can do is we can use this differential equation with our rate, our initial condition involving rate, right? So negative 12 is equal to K times 190 minus 70. Um, and we can solve for our K. That's really, really important. So now what we have is a differential equation, negative 0.1 times Y minus 70. And then guess what? We can solve this. We can separate variables, integrate both sides. This is what AP would require you to do. Okay, I'm assuming you get this stuff by now. So if you don't, you need to let me know. Okay, um, you end up with a natural log. We're going to exponentiate both sides because the idea is we want the solution. We, we're looking for the solution to this thing, the solution curve. Um, and, you know, the solution curve you would see in a slope field. Um, but we don't want to do slope fields because that's just too much work. Uh, anyway, we can assume right around here, you know, you can take these absolute values off because, um, you know, we're assuming that Y is going to be greater than 70. In other words, we're not going to have a negative temperature there. So anyway, we can remove the absolute values. Um, and then what we get is uh, solve for Y and get our equation. Now at this point, again, I can go ahead and use that second initial equation to get an exact solution, an exact time when the coffee um, has reached 130 degrees. And I can say, well, you know, 190 is equal to um, A times E to the zero, because at time equals to zero, the coffee was 190 degrees, plus 70. Solve this thing for A, get A is 120, and I can throw it in. And this would be the exact solution now, I'm looking for time still. I haven't found that, and it's over here on the next page. So the time that it's going to reach 130 degrees, now I'm going to use that solution to plug in my what I want, my 130 degrees, what I know, to find what I want, the time. And then I can subtract 70 from both sides, divide by 120, right? Take the natural log of both sides to get rid of that base E. And uh, anyway, I end up with ln 0.5, um, which is a negative number, right? Remember at the exponential, or not the exponential, the log, uh, the natural log goes through the point 1, 0. So any x value less than 1 is going to give you a negative value. So this is less than 1. So this is going to be a negative divided by another negative. Um, it's going to yield you a positive roughly seven minutes. So it's going to take about seven minutes for the coffee to go from 190 degrees to 130 degrees. And you'll get some more practice with these. Now, this is where I really wanted to get up to. Now, this is important. You could see this very easily on um, your AP exam. So we're going to do lots of these. Not, not in this homework, but I'm, I'm preparing uh, weekly review homeworks for you guys. So... We will do lots, trust me. But this is where I really wanted to get to, because this is super important, especially in the time that we live in with coronavirus, because coronavirus is following this model. I posted a um, little article, um, and I hope that you read it, because it's very interesting, and you may not understand all the math in it, 
But um, anyway, it's something that's relatable, relatable to uh, your time of existence right now, which is kind of cool. Like we're living in it. It's amazing. But anyway, the logistic differential equation. This is an S-shaped sort of curve that starts out by increasing very, very rapidly. And then at an inflection point, this is concave up, goes to concave down. Um, at this point of inflection, still increasing, but at a slower rate. Okay, So this point of inflection is the transition point from rapid growth to slow growth. In other words, just like with a population of people or bacteria or animals or whatever, we have an environment that surrounds us. And if the population were growing exponentially forever, we would run out of food and water and things like that. And bad things would happen. <laughs> so um, anyway, we have this point of inflection where we transition from rapid growth to slow growth. And the same thing happens with uh, viruses and disease. So initially, this thing's going to grow exponentially. And then the growth begins to slow down. So it's still increasing it's slowing down and what it's doing over here is reaching this limiting quantity which we call big L and that's called the carrying capacity so it's an asymptote and it's called carrying capacity all right the growth rate again this is the transition point where the growth rate slows so it's fast 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 fast, fast. and at this instant it begins to slow down okay this model's growth limited by a supply of necessary resources. So again, population, right? If you just think about food, if the population grew exponentially, there wouldn't be enough food on the planet to feed us. As it is right now, we're already experiencing that issue. You may not realize it, but we are. So anyway, uh, like I said, bad things will happen um, if this doesn't occur. And the maximum population is equal to this limiting capacity, all right? And that's just the number that the environment can sustain in the long run. K is a constant, and it's proportional to both the existing quantity, or the initial quantity, or the starting quantity, and the difference between that existing quantity and the carrying capacity. So there's two criteria here. Here's the equation. dy dt is equal to ky times 1 minus y over l. This is the exponential part, as you'll see in a minute. I think I made a nice, no, I didn't. <laughs> I thought I made something. Oh, I think it's on uh, an example. We're going to do a long example in a minute. Um, but anyway, this is the, this, this part right here represents exponential growth. And this part here represents growth slowing down. So they work together, all right? And what we have is dy dt is equal to k times y, 1 minus y over l. What I wanted you to notice here is that if this is a y and that's a y and that's a y, that's a logistic uh, differential equation. If, if this were uh, a p, if this were dy dt and this were a p and this were a p, it would not be logistic. So a nice way to remember this, it's d dt of a variable is equal to a number, which is k, times a variable times a number minus a variable. We call this piece right here a variable. And the logistics um, differential equations always take this form, always. The solution, you need to memorize this unless you, you want to solve this differential equation. And it's not easy. It's very lengthy. I'm going to show you. on page 454 of your book, the whole page, the whole page, and it's not even done there. It goes a little bit to the next page, all right? So in general, what we do is, in order to apply it, we use these two functions. So you can go ahead and you can separate those variables and you can solve it. It's, it's um, again, it's not hard, it's just lengthy. Um, but what you'll end up with is the solution, okay? So this is called the logistic growth model, and we can use this to make predictions about, you know, times or things in the future. And this A that's here, it's found by, so L is the um, carrying capacity, okay? A is this as a constant, T is time, and K is the, um, uh, and that shouldn't be a point either, that should just be negative KT, 
and um, uh, k is the uh, constant of proportionality, which I can never pronounce. All right, the a to find that it's really easy. It's the carrying capacity minus the initial value over the initial value or the initial quantity. All right, so I want to just I keep writing that and saying that because that's important. I don't want you to confuse them. Okay, and the growth rate attains a maximum when the population is equal to the carrying capacity divided by two. All right, that's at that point of inflection that I was talking about. So let's look at an AP style example. What did I do with it here? What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. Let's look at an AP style example. I'm going to get some more paper. And I thought I would just tape it right on the paper. Okay, so here's a typical scenario, AP style. Biologists stock a lake with 400 trout and estimated the carrying capacity, the maximum population of trout in the lake to be 10,000. The observation of the trout in the lake revealed that the number of trout tripled in the first year. A, assuming that the size of the trout population satisfies a logistic model, write a differential equation for the model and an expression. So we've got to read really careful. The first thing they want us to do is write the differential equation and an expression for the size of the trout population P after T years. Now they're giving you these variables for a reason. You need to use them, okay? Um, and then use the expression and the information to find the constant K. So we've got a few things we need to do here. So let me move this down, all right? So what I know is this, dp dt is equal to K times P times one minus P over L, where L is that carrying capacity, okay? I also know that P is equal to L over 1 plus A E to the negative K times T. And to find A, I need the equation uh, L minus Y naught over Y naught. So these are the things that I need to help me answer all of these questions, each of them. Okay, so what I know, what I'm given is that at time is equal to zero, the population was 400. So it was this completely empty lake and biologists put 400 trout into it. The only trout in existence in this lake. So there's 400 initially. I know that the carrying capacity is 10,000 as they told me it was. The other thing I know is that after the first year, okay, so let me bring this back down again. Oops. Um, Observation of the trout revealed that the number of trout tripled in the first year. So at time equals to one, well, if I triple 400, that's 1,200. Oh my gosh, this backwards thing is near killing me. All right, so, so far, what I know is, you know, I can plug a 10,000 in here. That's pretty much what I've got. But I don't need that. Remember that this is the solution to this differential equation. This is the differential equation. If I separate the variables and solve, I get this. And to find this constant A, I need that. Okay. So let's see. I need to use this formula. P is equal to 10,000 divided by 1 plus A e to the negative kt. That's what I know so far. And the first thing that's really easy to find is a. So I'm going to say a is equal to 10,000 minus y naught. Well, what was um, the population initially? It was 400. So the initial amount over the initial amount. And if we work that out, I'm going to get my calculator. So is that 9,600 divided by 400 is 24. Okay, so A is 24. So right now what I have is P is 10,000 
over 1 plus 24e to the negative kt. Okay, the other thing I know, because I'm going to want to find that k, the other thing I know is that after one year, there were 1,200 trout, the population tripled. So I can use that information, that second initial condition, if you want to call it that, or that second condition, to plug into here to find my k. So I'm going to say 1,200 is equal to 10,000 over 1 plus 24 e to the negative kt. Now these are not hard problems to solve. They're just a pain because it takes time and you have to be meticulous with your work. So here's how I do them. And it's going to be the same every single time you have to find a k or a t. I'm going to bring this up here and I'm going to divide by 1200. And what I notice is I can cancel two zeros for two zeros, and I've got 100 divided by 12. 4 goes into 125. 4 goes in here, 3. So what I have is 1 plus 24e to the negative kt is equal to 25 thirds. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So that's going to be 25 minus 3 is 22 over 3. And I'm going to divide both sides by 24. So e to the minus k times t is equal to 22 over 3 times 24. Now I'm going to break this down again. 2 goes into 22, 11. 2 goes into 24, 12. And 12 times 3 is 36. So what I have, if I get rid of this, is e to the negative kt is equal to 1136. How do I get rid of e? We've got to take the natural log of both sides. So when I do that, I'm going to have negative k times t is equal to ln of 11 over 36. Now this is smaller than 1, so I know it's also going to be negative. And, you know, I can do ln 11 divided by 36. Oops, I don't know if you can see that good. Um, and sure enough, it's negative. Furthermore, if I put in, let me erase that, delete. If I graph uh, ln x, again, it goes through the point 1, 0. And for all values less than 1, we have negative values. So if you can keep that in mind. Then here's what I want you to do. Because a lot of times you write this out and you think you've got a positive divided by a negative, and that gives you a negative, and that's going to be wrong. So be really careful with this. This is going to work out to be a negative. Negative divided by negative makes it a positive. Now, by the way, I didn't plug in for my t. I forgot, but that was a 1, right? So what I have is k is equal to ln of 11 over 36. And that was what? Uh, so it's approximately 1.186. So for part a, I'm going to tape that and bring this back down for part A again. I was asked to write the differential equation for the model. Okay. Um, and I forgot to do that, and I'm sorry. The differential equation is dp dt is equal to k times p of um, 1 minus uh, p over 10,000. Okay. They're not going to ask you to separate that. It's very rare that they would do that. I don't think I've ever seen it, actually. They're going to expect you to know those three. So there's the differential equation. Hey, I did that one. And an expression for the size of the trout population, P. Well, I just found what the K is. So to put this all together, I would have P is equal to 10,000 over 1 plus 24E to the negative 1.186T. That would be the second piece of my question, an expression for the trout population. And then use that expression to find the value of the constant k. So these two here, or maybe they would want this and then the k value, but generally they like to see it together. All right, so that was part A. Let's look at part B. 
part B says, what will be the trout population when the rate of growth predicted by the logistic model changes from increasing to decreasing? Explain your answer. So in AP, remember, you're going to have to explain things or justify things. So what do I know? Well, let me bring this back down here again. What will be the trout population when the rate of growth predicted by the model changes from increasing to decreasing? We know that the model changes from increase to decrease at a point of inflection. So it always looks, the graph always looks something like this. And we're gonna go from concave up to concave down somewhere around here. There's my point of inflection, okay? That point of inflection is equal to the carrying capacity divided by two. Well, they told us at the beginning that the carrying capacity was 10,000. So that's just 10,000 divided by two or 5,000, right? So the point of inflection in the graph of the logistic model occurs when the population reaches half the carrying capacity. So I just stated it instead of writing it because I don't feel like writing that all out, um, but you would have to write that out and I'll say it one more time. The point of inflection in the graph of the logistic model occurs when the population reaches half the carrying capacity. And of course, you can always denote that. But that's going to be where we're growing, growing, growing really fast. And then this is that transition point where we're still growing, but at a slower rate. So the growth rate slows down. C. Find the value of the largest rate of growth for the trout population. Show all of your work. Okay, so what are we looking for? The value of the largest rate of growth for the trout population. Well, that's going to happen to, again, this is the largest rate of growth, and then it kind of slows down. So, when P is equal to 5,000, right, it was, so it's 10,000 divided by 2, 5,000. And what I can say is, is dp dt is equal to K times P times 1 minus 5,000 over uh, 10,000 it was, right? 10,000, yeah. Oh, so sorry. There we go. And this is 1.186 times 5,000. And this is just, you know, 3 for 3, right? 5 divided by 10 is a half. So this is just a half. Half of 5,000 is 2,500 times 1.186 is, I don't know. What did I do with my calculator? Here, I have too many things on my desk. But if I go ahead and throw that in my calculator... I get 29.65 trout per year. So again, the value of the largest rate of growth for the trout population. That's how I'm going to find it. I'm talking about a rate of growth of the trout population, so I need to use the differential equation, right? That represents the growth rate. In part D. In part D, after how many years will the rate of growth of the trout population change from increasing to decreasing? Show all of your work. Well, we know that that inflection point is 5,000. And we can set that equal to our P equation. That was carrying capacity, or L, over 1 plus 24, uh, e to the negative 1.186t. And the thing is, we want to solve for time now, right? Because this problem specifically says, you know, after how many years. So we're looking for time. Well, we're going to solve this just like we did the one before this one or two before this one, where I'm going to bring this up and that down. So we're going to have 1 plus 24e to the negative 1.186t is equal to 10,000 divided by 5,000 is 2, right? 
If I subtract one from both sides, I get 24 e to the negative 1.186 t is equal to one. So e to the negative 1.186 t is 1 24th. Taking the natural logarithm of both sides, I'm gonna have negative 1.186 t is equal to some negative number, which is ln, over, uh, ln of one over 24. So remember, a negative divided by a negative, it doesn't look that way, but it is. And you would get to use your calculator anyway, so you would see it. If I do the natural log of one divided by 24, this is negative uh, 3.17805-ish. And if I take that and divide by negative 1.186, I get that time is approximately equal to, because it's a big number, um, time is approximately equal to 2.68 years. So a little more than two and a half years than I would expect uh, the rate of growth of the trout population to change from increasing to decreasing. I hope that's okay. I hope I'm not going too fast, but you can slow down the video if you want to. In part E, all they ask you is this, find the limit as t approaches infinity of p of t. Well, guess what? That's just the, I'm gonna go back up to this picture. This is L, right? A limiting capacity or a carrying capacity. They're asking you, what is the limit of that thing? Well, it's 10,000. We have any more fish than 10,000 in there? we're gonna be in trouble. In part F, we're asked to set up an equation to find the trout pop, uh, when the trout population will reach 8,000, use your calculator to solve your equation. Okay, well guess what? Of the three little equations that we have, right, are um, differential equation, our population equation, or the equation of solve for A, which we don't need because we already found A. So now we're down to two equations. Um, I'm not talking about a rate of change. I'm talking about time. And I'm talking about time when uh, the population, the trout population reaches 8,000. So it makes sense that I would solve this equation. And I'm not going to go through the motions of solving it. I think you can handle that by now. But what you should get when you do solve it is about 3.850 years. Remember, we round to three places past the decimal in AP. Um, so almost four years it's going to take for the trout population to reach 10,000. Now here's a really interesting question. It says, in G. Suppose now instead of stocking late with 400 trout, the biologists decide to start with 12,000 trout. So that means P of zero is 12,000. We want to find the limit as T approaches infinity of P and T and write a sentence interpreting your answer. Well, that carrying capacity is not going to change. We found earlier that it was 10,000. We, we knew this, the biologists knew this, but what did they do? They went ahead and threw 12,000 fish into their lake anyway. So how do we interpret this when the initial population, or any time, doesn't have to be the initial, is greater than the carrying capacity? We could say something like, when the initial, since this is the initial population, uh, is greater than the carrying capacity, then that implies that the population um, will continually decrease. It has to. It has no choice. Right? Um, Likewise, or on the other, on the flip side of the coin, when the initial population, so 
um, this is the answer to that question. Um, you know, suppose that the lake was stocked, with, or sorry, if the initial population was 12,000, or I'm reading the wrong one, sorry. In, um, in, instead of stocking the lake with 400, we stocked with 12,000 trout. Find the limit and write a sentence interpreting your answer. So remember, carrying capacity is not going to change. Carrying capacity for human beings sustaining uh, life on the planet is not going to change. I don't know what that number is off the top of my head, but it's not going to change. And <clears throat> if we go above that, then very bad things will happen. There will not be enough food to eat. There will not be a lot of things. Okay. So this is the answer to this question. But on the same token, when that initial population is less than the carrying capacity, so this is greater than. So um, when the initial population is less than the carrying capacity, then what we know is that the population will continually increase. And it makes sense just from the graph. Increase, 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 increase. It's going to slow down, but it's still increasing until it hits that, that carrying capacity. And then it's just sort of really, really slow. So the rate of growth is increasing at a decreasing rate. In that case. Okay, finally, the last problem. Sorry. <laughs> if the initial trout population is 12,000 and the value of the constant K is the same as the one found in 1A, so, uh, you know, P of 0 is 12,000 and K is 1.186, so the same as it was before. Find an expression for the size of the trout population P after T years. Well, I have this information here. I know that P is equal to carrying capacity for 1 plus 24. Oh, sorry. That's going to change. Yeah. P is equal to 10,000. Carrying capacity doesn't change. 1 plus a e to the negative kt, right? And in this case, a is going to be l minus the initial amount divided by the initial amount. And let's see. So that's going to be negative 2,000 by itself, negative 1, 6. I didn't need a calculator for that. Whoa. Okay, so um, my A is negative 1, 6. So P is 10,000 for 1 minus 1 over 6 E to the negative 1.186 T. This would be the expression that they're looking for. And that's all you had to do. Okay, if you needed to use it for something, to predict something, you could. But they didn't ask you to do that. Okay, so that was a really nice, thorough question that involved every little aspect of the differential equation, of the solution to the differential equation, initial conditions, uh, finding time, finding um, K. Okay, it's not that bad. Again, it's just tedious writing all this stuff out. So I hope that helps. Um, one other thing I want to do maybe right now just move this stuff out of the way here. One more thing about Newton's method. Newton's method, and by the way, in section 10.4 of your book, so um, the problems begin on page 456. Um, there are many types of problems in here that you could do extra practice with. And if you do any of the evens and you want the solutions, to, you know, so you can check your work, then that's fine. Uh, Newton's law. Newton's law. Newton's law, I believe, is in 9.4. It is. Because in order to solve it, you've got to do... Um, separation of variables. So that was taught first and then Newton's law. I think we did the orange juice problem in class, but I'm not sure. 
but there's some really interesting problems here. Um, so again, you know, find how long does it take or, you know, if the orange juice warms to a temperature of 50 degrees in an hour, how long does it take for it to warm to 60 degrees, that kind of thing. Um, another one is that um, a murder victim, I think we discussed this, but I don't know if we actually solved it, is found. And, um, you know, with a constant room temperature and um, assuming that the body obeys Newton's law of cooling, you know, write a differential equation in terms of temperature and then solve that differential equation. I think you could already do those two things as long as you know Newton's law of cooling uh, and that function is dy dt is equal to k times y minus 70. Again, you know, if the um, room temperature, you generally in our class, it's a 70 degree room. Um, here, this is a 65 degree room, so you'd have y minus 65, okay? Why don't you give those two a whirl and see how you do? If you can do those, you're, you're cool with Newton's method. And Newton's method is you take that differential equation. So let me move my camera. So the differential equation is y prime is equal to k times y minus 70, let's say, right? You rewrite it as dy dt is equal to k times y minus 70. We separate the variables. We integrate both sides. We exponentiate both sides and so forth. I think you guys should be pretty good at that by now. So I'm not going to bore you with yapping on anymore. Um, but the logistic uh, differential equation is probably pretty new to most of you. So uh, write down and memorize those three formulas. Go ahead and um, after you watch the video tomorrow, after you're done watching this video, uh, the homework will open up at 10 o'clock, I believe, in the morning. You go ahead and give that a whirl. And, um, you know, we'll see how you do. Now, once again, I'm just going to remind you that if you have questions on the previous homework, um, the one that's due tomorrow or the one before that, you need to email me through EDSB only, give me the problem number, and I'll be more than happy to help you. Um, I was thinking that maybe I could also just print out that homework and do a solution to every problem if you think that would be helpful. So you'll have to let me know via Edsby if you would, maybe I'll put a poll up if you would like me to do like, you know, homework solutions um, in a video um, to help you follow along. If you think that might be helpful to you, um, let me know. All right. So anyway, you guys have a great rest of your night and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. End stream.